my channel this is Juliet here I hope you're all well my February just started so today I'm trying to do two things I am trying to we're going to be decorating our bedroom um, at the end of next week my husband and I have taken some time off work to do it but before we decorate it I need to um, strip the paint off this fireplace because I want to bring it back to the wood so I thought I would combine stripping the fireplace with um, recording a video um, and you can tell by the title it is the no disclaimers book tag <clears throat> and I was kindly nominated by Sean the book maniac and I'll put a link to his channel down below okay so the no disclaimers book tag let's just get started straight away so question number one is which trope in books annoys you the most um, absolutely for me I really dislike um, books about psychopaths. I mean, the original, don't get me wrong. When I say I dislike books about psychopaths, I dislike books that are written today about psychopaths because they all follow the same trope, which is a um, overbearing mother um, and a son who has a strange kind of fixation obsession with the mother. Um, and then she is the reason why they turn into this loony psychopath. We really don't like that. And the other thing I really don't like in um, novels, another trope, is um, where, I don't know if it's a trope so much, but it's where the book hinges on some um, really dark, horrid bit of child abuse. Um, I'm thinking of the recent novel I read, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine, where part of the book's pull is finding out the awful thing that happened to the adult when they were a child. Really dislike that. I feel like that's kind of... I don't know, it's kind of um, a bit like ambulance chasing where you're glorifying something as awful as child abuse. Um, the only place where I, I didn't find it a big deal was in A Little Life, um, where one of the characters does have quite a difficult past. But I've, out of that whole book, that's the one area I would have criticised with that book. But the whole book wasn't about just discovering what happened to Jude. The book was about all the other characters as well. So yes, I really dislike books about psychopaths that go down the well-worn Freudian path of um, an overbearing obsessive mother always the mother's fault isn't it um, and I also really dislike books that um, use child abuse to titillate um, and entertain okay I've got to wait about five minutes for a paint stripper to do its job I'm not sure I've chosen the best paint stripper it said it was good for fine mouldings but because it's runny it's not really sticking on there so so the next question was um, which writer or writers do you feel are overrated or overhyped? Um, I have got so many that I think are overrated or overhyped. Um, I recently read, um, or tried to read, and read almost, sorry, listened to Great Expectations and Audible. I hate to say it, I think Dickens is overhyped. I'm sure maybe people are going to disagree with me on that. Um, Jodie Pico, I think she's massively overhyped. All of her novels are kind of the same thing. They're like a, an issue-based novel around a court case. Paul Colello, I think, is overhyped. I think he writes mushy, um, new-agey stuff. That is, there's nothing new about it at all. Um, Gail Honeyman, who wrote Eleanor Oliphant, is completely fine. Um, I think that's completely overhyped. Harry Potter. All the Harry Potter, for me, is overhyped. I think if you want a really good... Um, no, I won't go into it. There's too many Harry Potter fans up there. For me, Harry Potter is overhyped, but that's just me personally. Um, a book I read recently, and I can't remember the author, but a man called Ove, which I know is being turned into a film. I thought it was awful. I really don't understand why everyone thinks it's such a good book. Nah, overhyped. And I'll just see if I've got any others on my sheet that I put down. Sarah Winman. I think her books have been overhyped personally not really getting much from them. So yes, quite a lot of books or writers that I feel are overhyped. Oh yes, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. Seriously feel that book was overhyped. I have heard, but I haven't seen, that the, um, the um, stage show is really, really good and actually better than the book. Um, so maybe, maybe I would change my mind if I went to see the stage show. Um, also, I felt that Cloud Atlas was very overhyped and The Life of Pi. 
Um, but maybe the problem is because the books get so much publicity that my expectations get too high and therefore they are going to let me down. There's no way they couldn't let me down. So maybe that's the problem. Right, I'm now going to get on with a bit of, um, hopefully, scraping off some paint so we can begin to see the wood. And then I'll be back. looks like the fireplace is the cast iron continued so the only wooden bit must be so I wasn't expecting that so I'm going to be uncovering a cast iron fire surround so as this video progresses I'm going to get more and more covered in paint chips they're all over my face um, I haven't got hugely far with the fireplace, but it's definitely not wood. And the third question was your least favourite book or book since joining Booktube. Um, obviously, since joining Booktube, I've I've seen lots. Of, I've obviously visited lots of different people's channels and I've looked at their recommendations. And when you're trying to get to know yourself on booktube so i have to lean down because it's really not comfortable um when you um start off on booktube um you're not kind of sure which booktube is that you're going to really want to watch lots of it takes a while to get to know their taste and see if their taste is similar to yours and so there were a number of booktubers who i took their recommendations and read the books and then was disappointed by the books but that's just because I don't have the same taste to these booktubers not because the books inherently themselves weren't any good but yes some of the books that I have um, read since joining booktube that I haven't liked very much um, John Burnside I've read two of his now I've read The Dumb House which I did a review for which I'll link down below and I read Ashton and Vine so you know one early in his career and one later in his career I just don't think I'm a Burnside fan, um, so I won't be reading any more John Burnside. Um, also, um, Dickens' Great Expectations, couldn't finish it, nearly finished it, but couldn't finish it, really not for me. Um, and The Drum Tower by Farnoosh, can't remember the second name now, um, that was one that was recommended, um, or I saw recommended on Booktube. I just didn't get on with it. I think it was a fantastically written book about the Iranian Revolution through the eyes of a girl with mental health difficulties, but because it was through the eyes of a girl with mental health difficulties, there was no context, there was no wider picture of the political backdrop, and I didn't know enough about the Iranian Revolution for that book to um, really make sense or to gel with me. Question number four was... Um, Terrible ending which ruined a good book. Okay, so recently, thinking about books I've read recently, I read Happy by Nicola Barker, which starts off as a kind of, well, it's called a post apocalyptic dystopia um, fiction novel, which is really about um, the young, as they're called, submitting to, submitting to voluntary thought control. So, a bit like um, Big Brother. Um, but instead of the populace having thought control um, imposed upon them, in Happy by Nicola Barker, the young impose their own thought control on themselves through the use of graphs, which change colour if their emotions get too strong in either direction, be that happiness or sadness. Um, and I was really, really enjoying the book until about halfway through, and then the whole thing just goes absolutely bonkers and loses completely a narrative thread. But then the whole book is about um, the narratives we tell ourselves and how without stories we don't have identity. So I guess it shouldn't be surprising that the book did that. It just it left me feeling disappointed at the end. Another book I read years ago... Um, at a time when I still liked Jodie Picco was My Sister's Keeper. I used to like Jodie Picco books until I realised that they were all literally the same, just the same thing repeated over and over again. And in My Sister's Keeper, I thought it was absolutely awful. I think the ending was really ruined by the fact you've got a sister with um, cancer, another sister was born um, in order to don donate the umbilical cord, and then throughout her life she gives various 
parts of her own body to her sister, her blood, her bone marrow. Um, and then the novel is about, I'm sure you will know it, because there was a, a film that was done. Um, interestingly enough, the film had a different ending. Um, and in it, the um, sister has had enough and wants to die. And so she tells her little sister to refuse to give her a kidney. But the family, the mum doesn't know that, that the older sister has said this to the little sister. Anyway, so um, everything goes as you would imagine though, but it's a very, very sad, heartbreaking novel and the older sister eventually dies because she's had enough and she doesn't want any more treatment. In the book, completely randomly at the end, the younger sister then dies in a car accident. And I just thought that was a horrible way to end a novel because all I could think about was these poor parents had lost two children in close succession. I don't quite know why Jodie Pico thought it was a good idea to kill off um, the other sister, whether she was just trying to show how random life is, I don't know. But I think that was a terrible ending to that novel. And in fact, when it was made into a film, that ending was completely changed and the younger sister survives. Um, other novels with a terrible ending? Well, The Growing Season by Helen Sedgwick, I wouldn't say it was a terrible ending. I just don't think the book... Um, I think the book became a bit preachy towards the end and the ending was kind of, well, there you go, birth's not perfect, doesn't matter how you go about birth, whether you do it outside the womb or inside the womb, you're going to have the same problems occurring. I just thought it was a bit of a meh ending, didn't leave me excited. And generally for me, books that don't end properly don't conclude, I know real life doesn't conclude, but I do like books that have some sort of conclusion, some sort of form of wrap up at the end. Um, so I get a sense of completion. I don't like books that kind of end in the middle of the story or that's how it feels. Um, I don't like dramas that do that either. Right, I'm going to go back and scrape off some more paint before I answer the rest of these questions. So it's a few hours later. Fireplace is still a long way to go. But I have been doing... Um, <coughs> match pots over in the corner as well. Your next question was, which fictional character do I wish was not killed off in a novel? Um, I agree with um, Sean when he talks about the Rohinton mystery book, A Fine Balance, when so many of the characters come to a terrible end and you, and you invest so strongly in those characters. Yesterday I was listening to uh, Anna Karenina by um, Tolstoy on Audible. And there was a fantastic um, couple of chapters in there where Bronsky, who's having an affair with Anna Karenina, is about to be in a race, an officer's race, a steeplechase. <clears throat> and there's a wonderful um, build-up to the race. And his, the horse he's riding is called Fru-Fru, and she's a very highly strung, beautiful mare. Um, and um, Bronsky starts the race, and he's very distracted because Anna Karenina has just told him that she's pregnant, um, and he's thinking about whether she's going to leave her husband. He's also got his own mother and brother who are very cross with him for having this affair because they think it's going to ruin his army career. Um, but he is convinced that he's going to win the steeplechase. Um, and as I say, Fru-Fru is a um, beautiful mare. The way she's described, she's very highly strung. Um, and Bronsky is Rydiger and he is winning the race. He's doing really, really well. And winning the race and on the very last jump which Fru Fru does easily Bronsky sits back in the saddle at the wrong moment and you can only assume this is because he is distracted by all the worries and things that have happened just before the race and it's one of the saddest scenes I have ever read it actually made me cry when I was driving in the car um, because he sits awkwardly back in the saddle as Fru Fru is jumping, and I love the name Fru Fru for the, for the um, horse, the mare, he breaks her back. And she has done her best to win this race. I mean, she's literally worked so hard and Bronsky's so proud of her. Um, but this momentary lapse in his concentration means that Fru Fru then tumbles to the ground and Bronsky doesn't realise at first what has happened. Um, and it's, there's a horrible moment where he kicks her in the flank and tries to get her to stand up and she desperately tries to stand up using her front feet um, but obviously she can't because her back is broken um, and then it's, they realise what's happened and, and Bronsky obviously realises that it's his fault 
that this mare has um, suffered and then she's shot and I have never felt so devastated. I mean, Fru Fru was only in the story for a brief moment in time, but I guess it's it's testament to Tolstoy's writing um, that I just was devastated when the horse died. And the, so yes, very very sad. And then the other um, fictional character that I wish had not been killed off, but for a different reason, it didn't make me feel particularly upset, but was April Wheeler in um, Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. Um, because this is a novel all about 1950s America and how stifling gender roles were and how women were sort of forced back into the home after the war and most of them, a lot of them thought they were going mad but in fact it was the environment around them that wasn't sustaining you know women were expected to be content with raising children and um, looking after the home and April wanted more than that she wanted more in her life than that and it's really, really sad because she dies because of a DIY abortion that goes wrong because the thought of being pregnant again and how being pregnant again would trap her in the home for longer is so much, too much to bear and she wants to get rid of the baby rather than have to, um, have to go through that again because she already has children. And of course the abortion goes wrong and she bleeds to death. And that happened so often and happens so often in countries where abortion remains or terminations remain illegal and I'm thinking particularly of Ireland at the moment um, so yes I was very sad that April Wheeler was killed off because it just it's the sadness of, of being a woman in a society that um, doesn't treat men and women equally um, the next one is the books or um, pet peeves in books that I um, particularly dislike um, and now Sean talked about things like italics, writing about dreams, poems and songs and I have to say all those things do annoy me. I do tend to skip lyrics and songs but for me the biggest pet peeve in books is how they portray mental illness or mental ill health and so many books portray mental ill health in stereotypical ways. I'm thinking particularly of Silver Linings Playbook which I did do quite a scathing review of, I'll put a link to down below, where they were treating the mentally ill characters as if they were, had, were learning disabled, as if mental illness makes you dumb. I feel that that was the case for Eleanor and Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine as well. Oh yes, and another pet peeve I have, and I think it's, just, it, it's when this is done badly as opposed to um, all the time, but I do get annoyed by novels that start at the end, but it's not always clear that that's what they've done. And then you spend the whole rest of the book just getting back to that end point. And if that end point isn't particularly very exciting or particularly revelatory, then I feel like I've wasted my time reading the novel. I read the novel and I get really excited that we're going to go beyond the end point, And then I find that actually all we've done is go back to the very beginning. Um, and the one that really annoyed me when it did it was The Dumb House. In The Dumb House I expected so much more from this novel um, and I didn't realise that the start point of the novel was actually the end of the story. So I read the whole novel expecting so much more and feeling really let down by it. I did do a separate review of The Dumb House so I can put that in the link down below. Um, I'm just trying to think of a book that does that well. There are some novels that do it well. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Rebecca starts at the end and then literally you go back all the way through um, so the novel just takes you all the way through to how they got there. But I think in Rebecca it was really obvious that that was going to happen. For me, the dumb house didn't make it obvious that we had started at the end. So yes, my pet peeves are all the things that Sean said but equally how mental illness is portrayed in novels and novels that start at the end but don't make it clear that that's what they've done. Um, question number seven, which books do I think need, need more recognition? Well I think any books that are published by small presses often need more recognition and I've read two recently by two um, booktubers. Um, one is As a God Might Be by Neil Griffith and I did a long discussion on that novel which I'll put a link to down below but absolutely brilliant novel about religion, hearing voices, what does a visitation from God look like, what is God, what does it all mean, um, set in contemporary Britain, absolutely brilliant novel and another one is by um, Kate Armstrong, another uh, booktuber 
um, and her novel is called The Storyteller and it is the story of a mental breakdown um, and recovery and whereas I normally dislike the way mental illness is written about in fiction Kate Armstrong does an absolutely brilliant job in The Storyteller um, her characters are real, they are rounded um, they are just like you or I, and I think that's really important when you're writing about mental ill health. Another novel that I don't think has enough recognition was my favourite book from childhood, written by an adult writer called Lionel Davidson. I think this was one of his only children, or the only children's book he wrote, and it was called Under Plum, Ble Under Plum Lake. And it's all about a boy who goes to holiday in Devon and discovers a world below our world. Um, where adults are giants and people live for hundreds of years and they take Tigra, which sounds a bit like LSD but everyone takes it and they ski on the switched on switched off mountain and they visit the abyss which again sounds a little bit like an LSD trip where you find out the meaning of life absolutely fantastic children's book I mean it's not the best writing in the world but an absolutely brilliant beautiful children's book and I would love to see it republished and I would love to see it as a film so Under Plum Lake by Lionel Davidson. Um, question number eight what's my feeling on censorship and banning of books? My feeling is very strongly that we should not censor or ban any books. Um, who decides what to ban, what's what's good and what's not good. If we don't got to think about Sam and, Sam and Rushdie and Satanic Verses and how there was a fat wear out on him um, there's lots of books I don't want to read, as I said in my tr tropes at the beginning, I don't want to read books that sensationalise child abuse. Um, I don't like reading books that um, are stereotypical about mental ill health, but I think it's so important that, that we do not censor or ban any books, because if you start down that road, where does it end? So it's completely against banning of books, but I would love to hear other people's opinions on that and why they think potentially banning or censoring books is a good idea. And the last question is, who do I tag in this tag? I'm gonna to have to tag Kate Armstrong. I think she'd enjoy doing this tag. She's got very strong opinions about books. Um, APDI bookworm, I'm going to tag. She hasn't posted anything recently, but um, she's an American um, booktuber who I um, love watching and I'm going to come back because I need to look up some of the other small booktubers that I would like to tag but of course anyone can do these tags it's not about being tagged and doing it then anyway this is as far as I got with the fireplace still got a lot to do but I've started and I've chosen the wool colour which is going to be this green and then the um, feature wall, which is the wall behind the bed, will be this kind of bright, I don't know, it's a bright pink I guess. You can see it through the tree there, it's the um, middle colour. <laughs> 